Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to Nimbatus with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome finally to the video where we use TNT. So this is a weapon I haven't used, and I honestly don't know why. It looks like such a fun weapon, if a little bit limited, because of course, every time you use the TNT, the TNT is then used up, we get one shot per weapon, whereas the regular weapons you can keep on shooting, and some of them can be quite explosive anyway. But either way, I want to see just how good this weapon actually is. So, what we're going to do is quickly remove the side drones, goodbye and goodbye, and we're going to edit this fellow just so it becomes a TNT drone, so keypad 9. Let's just remove the extra weapons, like so. All well and good, and remove you, add TNT there. This obviously won't be our finished design, because I would like to make some kind of bombing drone today. That's the idea. A drone which goes around the world, and then we can manually release the TNT, allow it to fall, and then boom, we destroy the hives and the transmitter. So we're going to need six of these. Now the question is, would it be better to have some kind of downwards thrust as well? I don't know if crashing will cause enough damage for the TNT to detonate, whereas this will definitely work. It's definitely going to be the more reliable. Probably still want to go down, though, at the same time, I would imagine. So, yeah, let's do both. Let's do both. Now, we really should set this up differently, because right now what's going to happen is these thrusters are going to be active constantly. Then we release it, it goes down like that, and... Boom! Okay, perfect. Did the sensor just manage to survive? Whoa, 2,000 health. Oh, there's a problem. How much health does a hive have? There's a chance we're going to have to use multiple TNT, but that's fine, that's absolutely fine. It'll just be a little bit more annoying is all. But yeah, what we need to set up is the drone's thrusters only activate once we've let go. Go away please, thank you. We just need to find- there we are, transmitter, let's test it on that. Boop! Oh dear. How many are we going to need then? And, will the damage stack if we put multiple TNT in the same explosion? Also, might want to put that sensor a little bit further back as well to make sure they're always going to hit the target. Try number two. Oh, try right there. Well, that's helpful. Goodbye. Hmm. Hmm. I am a little bit worried. So, here's the thing. Let's do this. Just to prove the damage does stack, because this now should kill the main body. Oh. That's a little bit disheartening, honestly. Did not expect that not to work, honestly. We're going to work around it, but clearly TNT isn't as strong as I thought it was. Unless it just isn't damaging that part for some reason. Okay, one last test, then I'm going to do some proper designing, and I'll be right back. This isn't a promising start, but if you're watching this video, it's worked. That's the spoiler. Let's try that again, this time not setting off early. Well... That's definitely worrying. Also, I need to replace these shotguns soon. I've got a brand new weapon which I unlocked off camera, which honestly is really, really fun. It's the ultimate digging weapon, at least from what I've got so far. And it's this one here, the EMP bullet shotgun. It has big explosion and it has the digging upgrade. And of course it's a shotgun. It's ridiculous. It just carves through the ground. If this had cluster bullets as well, I think it would be almost perfect. I can't think of anything else I really need to do. So I'll be right back once I've had an idea of how to get this to actually work.
the range on those explosions is going to be really problematic. I'm still amazed that the damage doesn't seem to stack. Okay, so after a lot of testing of different ideas, releasing the bombs separately, trying to have them delayed, a lot of things like that, it just seems like they're not cut out for this particular job. But, I do have a different idea, which hopefully will actually be a lot cooler now i thought about it, and it's probably the title of the video, and of course that is a mouse-controlled missile. So we release it, it then follows the mouse into the target and detonates. And that actually shouldn't be too difficult, it's just going to be a little bit unstable until we actually release the craft. So, similar to what we've already got, just now, let's put this one a little bit further and then you can go here have the sensor still on all and a little bit further forward. So you are going to follow the mouse creepily, thank you very much. And then let's put down one of these. Actually, we don't really need the logic splitter as long as we put, put in different keys and that just saves on space. So keypad four and keypad five, let's say. Then we just add the regular thrusters, either at the back or the front, that's fine. And then a way to go forwards. Uh, how fast do we want it? Probably not that quick, just because it'll be a little bit more difficult. We could use the jump thruster, now that would be interesting, but for now, let's just keep it nice and simple until we've proven this is a concept. Then we can go a little bit more mental. Well, it definitely works. It's like a little highly explosive pet. Wee, and then suddenly, dink. The real problem is these turning thrusters. There needs to be something done about those, but the problem is I'm not actually sure what we can do about them. Is there any way to turn them off until I've released this? I wish there was a way just to turn off a directional thruster until a command is given. Similar to this thruster here, just a button or a switch like we have up here, which is controlling the thrusters. You can see the thruster isn't on until I, I let go of the button and then, ta-da, it's on full. Because having multiple of these is going to be a little bit difficult to control with all of those thrusters trying to keep it straight. Dink. I'm probably missing something we could really easily do here. Oh! I suppose... Actually, I think I know how we could do this. And it is actually using a switch. Please say this works. It's such a simple idea and I can't believe I didn't think of it faster. Okay, so thrusters aren't activated. And release. Perfect. And I think we can even turn them off. Yes, we can, including the directional thrusters. Back on, back off. Back on, back off, back on. Boom. So how does this work then? Because for me, logic gates still aren't second nature, so I've got to sort of walk myself through these things. It's actually a really simple concept, and it's kind of a shame I didn't think of this faster. So as we had before, the switch, toggle left shift, activates keypad 6, keypad 6 is the thruster, and left shift is the decoupler, which means once we decouple, the thruster becomes permanently on, unless we press it again to turn the whole thing off. That worked out pretty well. Well then, all we've done is this. We have two AND gates also set to keypad 6, which means unless it's decoupled, nothing will get through, at least the other input won't get through, and the other input is the directional sensor. If both of them are active, so the sensor is 
simply detecting something wrong, the mouse is no longer being directly pointed at, and keypad 6 is on from the switch, then it will actually activate the small thruster outputs, which are, at the moment, keypad multiply and keypad plus. I don't know why I picked such weird things, but I just did. So, yeah. Unless both of the inputs are there, the output doesn't happen, and this stays perfectly still. Thus meaning, we don't have as much worry when moving it around, although we could have attached this a bit more stably. Hello, enemy. This is my friend. Perfect. Absolutely wonderful. Let's do a quick test just to make sure it works on a planet. Hello, planet. Hello, enemies. Face the wrath of the ultimate mining weapon. Yeah, I absolutely adore this weapon. All it needs is cluster. If it had the cluster shot, then it would be just utterly perfect. So then, let's make this missile look a little bit better and be a little bit more stable. It is a shame we need the directional sensor. It's such a large item to add. We could probably also simply add lasers or the Geiger drill and then and then use this in order to drill through sections with our mouse. That would be cool, maybe in the future, but for now let's just focus on this. So, these two at the front aren't stable, so let's just do that. I think we could add some more speed if we had some more turning ability. So, plus and multiply. Let's just remember that. Plus. There we are, and multiply. Let's see if that's stable. Oh, very stable. No, I want to be friends! <laughs> oh, come on, that laser is so irritating. Oh, no, too close to me. Hmm, maybe a manual detonation would be good as well. Oh, come on! Oh, it's damaged. There we go, killed a load of them. What is the button anyway? It's keypad 8. Obviously, I'm never going to be able to press that. So how about just backslash? Try that again. And backslash is ready. Dink! And it did kill the enemy. Perfect. Now, having multiple of these would be a little bit irritating, I imagine, because I think I would need... Oh, yeah. Would I need two AND gates for every single one of these missiles? Oh, I think I would, wouldn't I? So maybe it would be better, then, to have the AND gates built into the missile. That way we can just copy and paste the missile as well, which is a big deal. All we need to do then is just shift the decoupler. Ah, that's a thought. I think it needs a spike. That looks very odd. That also looks very odd. Okay, let's, um, let's try and make it look a little bit prettier, shall we? Let's see if this works out, then. First one. Okay, as per usual. Second one, and yep, yeah, that works out just fine. So all of the logic gates and the switch is now located on the missile itself, no longer on the main body. Now, it is very cumbersome to actually move these, but even so. You go first. Goodbye. You go second. Well, it definitely works. I wonder what would happen if we released both at the same time. How much chaos would that create? Oh, they're like little pets. Oh, ooh, get away from me. Away from me. If you detonated now, that would be very bad. Ooh. And ramming into each other, causing utter chaos. Glorious. So, here's a thought. 
what if we use them as a sort of orbital strike? So we're down here minding our own business, we're being overwhelmed, and then we call for bombs. Now, of course, this won't work if we're too far out, but even so, that is such an interesting idea. I really, really like that. Because the problem with having all the logic gates on the rocket themselves is almost completely because, well, they're so cumbersome. Trying to move them around really slows down the parent drone until, well, you just can't add too many of them. But if we always use them early, then that wouldn't be so much of a problem. Would it, guys? Let's give it a quick test. Let's give it a quick test. It also means we're not hauling around highly explosive TNT all the time, which is pretty darn nice. Okay, how about if we don't kill a hive next time? Maybe that would be a better idea. Oh no, how am I going to get through this ground? A bomb, you say? <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, I'm in love. There we go. Look, now it's an easy access route. <laughs> wow. Oh man, I absolutely love this game so much. It just it puts a smile on my face, you know? Moments like that, it's just <laughs> it's just pure joy. Oh, let's do that again. Oh no, enemies on the ground! Well, you killed most of them, so that's good enough. Of course we are just leaving be behind these poor eyes, which just glare at my mouse forever. You've abandoned us. Did I just try and release the wrong one? I think I may have. There it is. Hello, buddy. Oh, there we go. <laughs> well, it helped anyway. Now if, now, if I had more time, what I could very easily do is make a more stable version of the satellite and have loads of these. Just absolutely loads. Set them all up to different keys and then release them into the wild. Well, we may as well finish off this world before we go, eh? I am running out of time, but let's... One more time. So many designs now which I need to refine. Follow me, my friend. Oh, bombs. Help me, my own bomb. Oh, no, 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 that was bad. No, 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 bomb. Bomb, I believe in you. There we go. <laughs> Counter bomb bombs. Love. Ooh. If only we had another one. There it is. Hello, friend. Trying to control it with the, the drone itself can be a bit difficult, though. Ooh, that was a bit close. Did I just lose some parts? I saw some not-so-good-looking explosions. Yep, I at least... I, I lost at least one thruster. Don't mind me just digging out your world. That's great, but where is that? There's the transmitter. Fantastic. What did I get? <gasps> it's a flamethrower. Bonus damage. Nothing else, just bonus damage. And less energy use. Actually, that's pretty good. Low digging strength, though. Still, the extra damage almost makes up for it. What I really want to see is a flamethrower with bonus damage, bonus digging damage. That's really the flamethrower I'm after. Either way, though, I'm all out of time for today's episode, but I really do hope you've enjoyed. And honestly, I had a load of fun doing that. This is rapidly becoming a game in my top 10 because it's so simple yet so fun and I really can't wait until it's finished. So thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Nimbatus is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Thank you so, so much for watching, and goodbye.